This Viewfinder episode is supported by UC Davis Health System. At UC Davis, the lives we touch inspire us. Well, I've got 12 here. All right. She just can't relax. Okay, here's my, okay, here, one, two, three, four. I've lost her. Here's the threes now. People kind of fade away in front of family's eyes. Sometimes just amazing things would come out of her mind, and then other times there was just nothing there, vacant. It's going to affect a far, far greater number of Americans, one out of three, perhaps. It is a real struggle for a lot of families. We need to solve this. I just keep saying my wedding vows to myself, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. Stage by stage, step by step, I'm getting to that point where I'm gonna have to let her go. She's not the same woman that I, that I married and raised my children. And that probably is a, something that I've had and continually adjust myself to. It's Saturday morning. David Uribe has been stealing a quiet moment to read the paper before his wife Eileen returns from breakfast with their son. Watch your step here, I'll help you up. One, two. Eileen treats our camera crew with suspicion. Who the hell is this? Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. You know of them. No. Lately, my wife uh, has developed a, a real jealous streak. But then her mood changes. For a moment, Eileen is like the sweet USO hostess that David fell for over 60 years ago. I don't want to down there. Her family was alive to her. I don't think I could have met a better a better person than I did. We had two wonderful children. And I can't stress enough how much how lucky we are to have the kids that we do. She uh, brought them all right. Seven years ago, Eileen's personality began to change. On a family cruise, she became confused, disoriented. We also lost her in the supermarket, and I knew you know, something was definitely happening to my wife. Hello. As doctors began to track her, test results pointed in one direction, Alzheimer's. Come here, hon. Remember, you remember this. Today, David must essentially babysit his own wife, whose recent memories have faded. Look, you remember this? Our wedding, wasn't it? Yeah. She lives in the distant past, often behaving like a defiant child. She says, you're not my husband anymore. It hurts, it hurts, of course, my initial reaction. Then it dawns on me that, you know, she's not her normal self. She's doing something. No. I'm this throw this at him and I... No, don't you get it. no. As the baby boomer population ages, 10,000 people turn 65 every day. Every 67 seconds, someone is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and scientists are racing to find a solution for the five million Americans who struggle with this most common form of dementia, a decline in one's ability to think. It's the classic syndrome where someone becomes increasingly forgetful. Then they will have problems doing complicated tasks such as driving the car, balancing the checkbook, and then they may develop some problems with their speaking. Eileen's disease is advanced, and like many spouses, David is torn between hanging on and saying goodbye to a wife who is still physically here. Stage by stage, step by step, I'm getting to that point where I'm gonna have to cut, let her go. And there's mom and grandma. That's not my mother. That's your mother right there, are you there? That's not. That's your mother right there. Oh, it is, huh? We really don't know why some people, particularly at the end um, stage of the disease, um, can become more agitated and some people not. What are you doing sleeping? I'm not sleeping, honey. I'm resting my eyes.
I do think sometimes that as people get affected by um, Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia, that it tends to amplify some of their pre-existing tendencies. Feather hat? That's your hat. I don't wear that hat. Well, you had it coming in. I did not have it. You had it on when I was oh, coming Oh, yes, in. okay. David keeps a journal of the rare moments when he and Eileen seem to click. Last week, we were having lunch, and suddenly she said, I'm sorry I've causing you so much trouble. On no Monday, November the 10th, out of a clear blue sky, she said, David, I love you. Do you want a kiss? Oh. <laughs> As David tries to focus enough to plan his next move, he's relieved that he and Eileen invested in long-term health insurance. Most Americans don't, and many spend down their assets trying to qualify for Medicaid. What happens sometimes is our first contact with a family will be a caregiver who's been caring for their loved one for several years and has hit a crisis point and somehow has finally found out that we're here to help. As the population ages, the Alzheimer's Association is adding programs, providing legal and financial guidance, as well as emotional support, preparing patients and their loved ones for the long journey ahead. Anxiety is not going to help. I mean, you have to control that. When best-selling cookbook author Paula Wolford first had problems thinking clearly, she tried to hide it. I had just finished my ninth or tenth book and um, it takes about a year for a book to come out but I was having a little trouble writing it at the end. Paula fudged her way through media interviews hiding the fact that she couldn't remember measurements much less the names of her dishes. Just why Paula developed these issues when she has no family history of Alzheimer's is a mystery. At the UC Davis Alzheimer's Disease Center, researchers are looking at everything from genetics to changes that take place at the cellular and molecular levels. And this is outside the cells, and we believe that this is what causes Alzheimer's disease. This is a protein called amyloid. It builds up around the brain cells of Alzheimer's patients, causing clumps or plaques to form. It starts in the memory organ of the brain, the hippocampus, and then begins to spread to the outer parts of the language part of the brain, the temporal lobe, and then the front part of the brain where we have attention concentration. And that's where those other symptoms begin. Over time, there is more and more atrophy or shrinking of these memory regions. And that is caused by accumulation of amyloid in those areas. And amyloid is toxic to the neurons, and that's why they eventually die off over time. Researchers suspect that amyloid may start to accumulate in the brain years before symptoms show up. Until recently, the only way to study amyloid has been to study brain tissue after an autopsy. But now experts can detect amyloid in living patients and they can track another protein called tau, which form toxic tangles that spread throughout the neural network, poisoning brain cells along the way. As you can see, the red and orange is significantly increasing when the mutation exists. All this red stuff is plaque deposition in the brain. Take a little lemon, and then I'll make the dish, okay? As Paula's symptoms progressed, she gave up book writing to focus on slowing her rate of mental decline. I didn't cry. I said, I have to save myself. There isn't anybody out here who's promising me anything. They gave me pills, I take them. There are books, I read them. As Paula hangs her hope on research, she's well aware that the average patient loses 1% of functional brain tissue each year. This is how the brain should look like. As the, you get volume loss, the brain shrinks, so these little clefts get bigger because there's literally less brain and more water in between the clefts. The best drugs available today treat the symptoms temporarily. Current medications uh, actually uh, give you a temporary boost of mostly your memory and attention. I, th I like to describe that as kind of turning back the clock a little bit, and on average it's kind of like rewinding the clock about six months. For scientists, the race is on to find ways to alter the disease path. 
This research takes them beyond the lab as they begin to study entire communities of every cultural, economic, and ethnic background. The family history was remarkable for her paternal grandmother had dementia of unknown type. We can then use all of that to understand the very basic principles of how the brain ages and then what things lead to the brain to decline as we get older. Neurologists want to know, why is Alzheimer's more common in women? Why do some patients live longer than others? And why do some, like Holly Doolittle, slip into a happy, almost blissful state? This is probably the best part of my life, because I sleep hard and eat hard and have fun. Ollie has mild cognitive impairment. He's able to drive and run basic errands. But these days, he prefers to focus on puzzles. And this is that limb, and this is the section below the flowers here, going across here. I don't do very much now. I just take it easy, you know, hope I live a long time. Ollie's wife, Laverne, shares his hope. She's the one who captured his heart back in high school. I was cute when I do little. He tells me, he say, you used to be so pretty. I, oh, I say, you used to be so handsome. <laughs> I was 21 years old on this one, this one here, in the military, I mean, it's this one here. Ollie's military service comes up often when his mind gets stuck in a loop. I thought maybe after I'd retired from the Army and then from the Postal Service, and I said, when I retire, I'm going to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, Bernie. <laughs> Humor has helped the Doolittles cope since Ollie began having trouble with his memory about nine years ago. Really the hallmark is forgetting recent information. So forgetting recent conversations, recent events. The main thing right now is repetition, repeating. This is what I do on my pastime. I sit here and watch the football games, or basketball games or whatever, and I work the puzzle. I watch the ball games, and I work the puzzles. I sit here all day watching football on Saturdays and working the puzzle. This is why I sit and I watch the ball games and I work the puzzle while I'm watching the game. When behaviors like this begin to interfere with daily functioning, neurologists recommend an assessment to rule out a vitamin deficiency, stroke, brain injury, or memory problems that come from stress. The importance of early diagnosis is so that we can implement treatment strategies as early as possible before uh, Alzheimer's disease has caused a lot of brain cell loss. Knock, knock. Hi, Mrs. Colvin. An accurate diagnosis is also important because Alzheimer's is treated differently than other dementias. It can take many conversations in the clinic to point doctors in the direction of Alzheimer's. As patients provide scientists with lab samples, their loved ones help researchers track their behavior. In return, they often receive heightened support from social workers. You have a sense of you're not alone in this, and you're not, and you cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. One, two, three, two, three. For years, Robbie Colvin has enjoyed volunteering in her community, providing meals for the homeless. So that's good for me. Okay, so just forget it. So forget this one, forget this one. Despite Robbie's Alzheimer's, her giving spirit has remained intact. But today, she's stuck on a simple task, trying to fill each lunch bag with an orange. Uh-oh. Okay, somebody, ooh, good. Someone put too much in that one and none of this. Robbie's aide, Janine, who provides relief care several hours a week, offers to help. I'm just double checking because sometimes, and we all do it, we don't want to miss one. I did, them, I did it all right. You don't have to look at them, okay? All right, here we go. It's tough for the others to see, knowing that a decade ago, Robbie served as the mayor of Placerville, California and then on the city council after teaching math at a local high school. She was my best friend, my lover, and I've lost her. 
Lately, the Colvin home has been in turmoil. Robbie refuses to groom herself. When Dennis asks her to bathe, she tries to kick him out of the house, then accuses him of stealing the family car. She would wash a pot here in the sink, and then instead of drying it off with a towel, she put it on top you know, of one of these burners and then turned the burner on, and that's how she would dry the pot. After one too many glowing red pots left on the stove, Dennis installed a hidden check valve so she can't fire it up. He also positioned hidden cameras around the house to help keep his wife safe. Nobody should go through this kind of pain. You know, it's just an absolute horror of a disease. It destroys your dignity and your personality, and it lasts forever, and it lasts forever. I guess I'm, I'm not from here, Placer, but I'm... But you live here now. I live, oh You've yeah. You've been here for 40 years, at That's least. Right. right. And you haven't been to my house yet? <laughs> People use the word journey, and it's, it, it doesn't even begin to describe the, you know, the hell and the madness that you're going through in this, in this disease. If we are going to help our older population who are developing dementia, the best thing we can do is help the caregivers. Yes. How you doing? All right. This is my husband, Don. Caregivers are an important part of Alzheimer's treatment. They keep the patients mentally engaged, which helps keep the mind sharp. I think the effect of supporting the caregiver will be equal to, if not greater than anything they can get from the medications that are available to them right now. Social outings help Laverne Doolittle relieve stress. While Ollie interacts with other people, she gets a small break from his constant demand for attention. This is my pastime when I'm watching the football games from this angle here. When Ollie's chatter wears her down, Laverne escapes to the backyard, hoping for peace and quiet. When I get a little upset with my husband, I come out here and swing for about five minutes. And then I go back, I'm refreshed <laughs> to start over again. <laughs> oh boy. But within moments, Ollie finds her. And this is why I sit and I relax right here. I have, this, <laughs> I have the squirrels and the birds right here to talk to. Oh, Lord of Jesus. If I didn't laugh or cry, I would probably explode. She tries to leave him alone, but at the same time, she can't tear herself away. Do look. Come here, I want to show you something. Uh-oh. Come here. I'm in trouble now. <sighs> I was relaxing. Now I gotta come and see what you want. When frustration builds, experts say it's best to reach out for support. But Laverne tries to tough it out on her own. My primary care doctor, she said, right away she was on me to go see a psych psychiatrist. And I said, no. <laughs> I'm just having a bad day. She thought I was planning on committing suicide or something. I'm gonna give you a hug, that's what you needed. Okay. Laverne knows she has to take better care of herself. While one in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or dementia, no many caregivers die before their loved ones, often from the effects of stress. Sometimes I take my own pulse, and I can tell when it's racing a little bit, so that triggers me, hey, slow down. For David Uribe, the stress comes from being unable to meet Eileen's increasing needs. The family struggles with a dilemma. Should they keep Eileen at home, or place her in full-time memory care. I've been fighting it you know, in my own way and not realizing that it's inevitable. I worry about the future. <laughs> but I'm feeling, I didn't want to cry, but I'm gonna be okay. But I worry about the future, being by myself. I have my son, but it's not like having your husband. And I might go before it. I feel that 
if I let it start worrying me inside or in my mind, that it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> it was so hard. It was so hard to. I had to cry and just push myself because I know that I had nobody else that could do it for me. Nobody but me, I had to take care of myself. Sometimes I wake up and I look around, and say, well, I'm still here. Sometimes I go to bed and I wonder well, how it's gonna to be tomorrow. Through the tears, the Doolittles have found an upside. Ollie's obsession with puzzles has led to this. I put them up out there to remember that I did it. I just got carried away. What happens is people continue to live their lives. Things like um, remaining physically active, socially active, um, involved in things that they feel are important. And when it comes to activity, neurologists point to an important discovery, the relationship between heart health and brain health. We can show you that at the age of 43, we're already starting to see effects of hypertension on the brain. This is something that starts early in life and is amenable to treatment and may not be amenable to treatment later in life. For Paula Wolford, the healthy lifestyle is working. Tests show her rate of decline is slowing. I have an enthusiasm to try and get better. If I don't get better, if the Alzheimer's people can't help me, if my doctors can't help me, I'm trying to be stable until something out there does help me. That's my lunch today. While Paula focuses on nutrition, scientists are exploring ways to help people boost disease resistance, including immune therapies. Researchers tell us we should be funding at least $2 billion a year to really start to get a handle on this disease. The problem is public funding for Alzheimer's study is low compared to other major diseases, where massive research efforts have led to remarkable improvements. Should we throw a few more bombs into Iraq, have a few more nuclear weapons, or should we solve what is a problem for every family in America, Alzheimer's? On this point, Congressman John Garamendi is sounding the alarm, calling for more Alzheimer's funding as America's most expensive disease threatens to bankrupt health care. As you begin to think about the deficit that confronts this nation, this is where you need to look because this is where the big expenditure is going to be made. It's going to be in Alzheimer's and related illnesses. As California's former insurance commissioner, lieutenant governor, and as someone who cared for a mother-in-law with Alzheimer's, Garamendi shares a unique vantage point with his wife, Patty. My mother, uh, grand lady, beautiful. Between their finances and family support, the Garamendis were able to rearrange their home to care for Patty's mother and create an experience that they want to make possible for all families until there's a cure for Alzheimer's. My husband gave up his office um, so we could put her hospital bed in there right next to the kitchen. And it was just as it should be, you know, a part of the family. And it was really quite beautiful. We didn't want to let her go but we got to have her up to the very last moment. While this was the dream for the Uribes, life is turning out much differently. Over the holidays, Eileen had a fall, which landed her in physical rehab. As daughter Linda moves her mother to a memory care residence, her father is noticeably absent. You know, he was having a tough time when we left the house. It's really this weird kind of mixed feeling, I mean, he couldn't go on the way he was much longer. Yeah, Mom. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're just waiting for Martha to bring us a bag, and then as soon as we get all this stuff in the bag, we're heading you out. For David, reality is setting in. His wife of 60 years will not be coming home. 
The worst part for me is that when I realized that she died about four or five years ago from, from the woman that I knew, that's not the woman I married. That's not the woman that raised my children. I still love her more than ever. As the Uribes begin the slow process of letting go, in the big picture, they're not giving up. They're sharing their story, holding out for a cure, hoping to save us all the pain of watching a loved one fade away. I try to think about things as if I make it tomorrow okay, and if I don't, I'll go today. If nothing helps me, at least I'm living in the now. And I want the now to be tomorrow, too. You, you may not believe this. With all of this, I'm, I would say I'm happy. The other night, she just kind of moved closer to me and locked her arm into my arm, you know, and looked at me with a look like, uh, like I love you. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was great. I'm a fighter. I don't give up on nothing easy. Been in two wars, wounded, everything else. I just sit and look and thank God for what, that we're still together. We're still walking and we're still alive. <laughs> Some days it's pretty, pretty good. Oh, Vernie. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. This Viewfinder episode is supported by UC Davis Health System. At UC Davis, the lives we touch inspire us.